Mitchell, WNBA MVP. I still won't be fed in you. I like the dancing. Nafisa Collier joins us right now. So, I mean, there's, I've seen you everywhere. Uh, not just on the court last night crushing uh, L.A. here, but um, also you, we're going to get to the unrivaled thing. Everything that you've been got going on has been great. That's not English that I did. Yeah, right whoa. <laughs> it's fine. Um, <laughs> but we got to talk about last night's game. 25 points, nine rebounds. It was a double-digit blowout win here. Um, your coach passes Bill Lane Beer for second most wins. As a coach, number one, does a celebration occur when something like that, a milestone like that gets hit? Do you guys... What do you do? Do you hang out afterwards and do something together? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, in the locker room, you know, she gives everybody their flowers for what they did in the game. And then we're like, wait, 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 wait. Cheryl did this. And then we throw water on her. Yep, there it is. Oh, no. Oh, this is a party. <laughs> not fun at all. Like she's trying to get out of here. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I feel like passing a Bill Lane beer for anything is a double celebration moment. Look, that little Absolutely. extra bottle of water, that's personal right there. Yeah, that I mean, was personal. Yeah. <laughs> let me get that off. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's just water. Yeah. To be worse. It was cold though. It was fresh yeah. in the <laughs> it's, It was good. Team personal. B, you haven't, uh, you guys haven't won a championship with the Lynx since 2017, but now you guys are third uh, behind Connecticut, behind New York. What do you think this team has to do to win another championship? Um, I think stay really solid in our defense. I think it's the best it's been since I've been here. Um, offense is really important too, obviously. We got some really great free agency pieces. Um, our rookies are older from last year. They're more experienced. I think just the talent we have on our team um, is so good. So we can execute on the offensive end, but we're really hanging our hat on defense this year with this team. So it's been really fun. Nafisa, your, um, your head coach said your, your MVP season is coming. You started this year 22 and 11. That's nothing to sniff at. Is that, is that a goal of yours for this season? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like it's definitely in me. It's something I've wanted, you know, as a goal of mine that I've set, and I feel like it's right there. So um, I just need to go out there and, I mean, really, obviously winning is the most important thing, and I think everything else will follow after that. I can't wait to ask you this next question. Obviously, the weekend was dominated by the Kennedy Carter foul and the Caitlin Clark and the Angel Reed, everything. I mean, I'm on the outside. I'm one of these obnoxious talking heads that have had to talk about it now for hours and hours and hours. For you, being on the inside, being a part of this entire organization and business, what has been your take sort of on the coverage of this last weekend? Yeah, it's been crazy. Um, honestly, I think it's great for the sport. Like, uh, you know, I don't agree with what Kennedy did, and she apologized herself. Um, you know, I don't think that was right. But just the coverage in general, I mean, you know, any publicity is good publicity, right? And it gets people talking about the sport. It has, like you said, you guys are talking about it. Everyone is talking about it. And so that brings more eyeballs to the game. Um, again, I don't agree with what she did, but I like the fact that women's basketball and women's sports is such a conversation piece. Yeah, my whole thing was like, her teammates. And I know that she, Kennedy said that, you know, their friends are in their friends. But if someone did that, and if my best friend did that to my rookie, I'm talking shit. I'm put. I'm doing something. If something <laughs> happened on your rookie on your links, are you like? Are you doing something to them? Are you confronting them? Because that was where I had the issue with that. None of her friends kind of went to bat for her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is definitely something that we've talked about as a team as well. Like, um, you know, it's not that she's a rookie. Uh, you know, all rookies get beat up. Like you said, it's kind of her team. You have to protect your teammates, no matter who that happens to. You have to make it so they're not a target. She's already a target. Um, and, yeah, your team has got to have your back. So I definitely agree with you on that one. It's like a conversation piece in our locker room as well. Um, if that happens to any of our teammates, you got to stand up for them. You can't let someone do that. Not to mention, Nancy Lieberman says on her show yesterday <laughs> that if it was her, I, she should have punched her in the face. <laughs> like, like Caitlin at some point has oh, got to do something you know, Nancy's herself. Nancy's a little old school. Nancy's, Nancy's a little tough. She was like, if my teammates are going to get my back, I'm going to punch her in the face and I'm going to not get bullied. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I, also okay. like, I don't know if I'm going to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little nuts. <laughs> I want to I want to ask as, as much attention as Caitlin has brought um, to the WNBA and so much discourse about what's been going on and all of this and, and you just mentioned it she's brought a lot of different a lot of new eyeballs to the sport how can you take that energy that everybody has brought and make it into a positive and, and teach people hey we got more going on outside of Caitlin Clark in this game yeah I think it's great um, you know like I said, it gets people talking, it gets people watching the game more. It gets more of a casual fan as well, which is great for the game. Um, and I think you just use that. Like, you use that to show them that there's other amazing players in this league. Um, we have the top talent in the world. So 
Um, no matter why the eyeballs are there or why we're getting that attention, use that to your advantage and go out and ball out, and then they can see the other talent that we have as well. Nafisa, on the flip side, like, do you feel like players like you and Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson, obviously, like, all WNBA players, all star caliber players, MVP candidates, are you guys feeling like you guys might not be getting the same shine or deserve uh, to get more shine just elevating the sport? Like, how do you view just you guys, uh, you know, part of the, of the league? Yeah. Um, I think, I feel like that's an unfair way to look at it. You know, um, I think Kaylin's a really great player and I think this whole rookie class is really good. Um, that doesn't take away from the fact that there are other good players. It's like, yes, I wish that Asia, Stewie, myself got more attention, but that doesn't mean it needs to come from someone else. We can get it also. Um, I think we're all deserving. So again, I think it's good that we're getting those more eyeballs. So you can see the, I mean, we have the best players in the world, so you can see that as well. So it's not taking away from someone else, but yes, I do think that we deserve more as well. Also on the business side, you guys co-founded, uh, you and Brianna Stewart co-founded Unrivaled, uh, the three, three on three, 16 league, um, really the first of its class. Why was it the right time now for this league? Give us all the details, break, break it all down. Yeah. First. We've actually been working on this for like two years. We just got so lucky with like the explosion that is happening right now. But we've been working on this because we knew like how special of a product that we have and how special it could be. Um, and so we put in that work before and we've just gotten so lucky with how just like the circus that is women's basketball right now. Can you tell us who else is involved yet I, I, or, or give us any hints and, and just d just what you guys are thinking uh, as far as rosters and, and players to go target? Well, I can tell you for sure that Stewie and I are both in it. <laughs> but I can't tell you more. <laughs> can't give it away. Nope. Trying to get me in trouble on here. No. Nope. Yeah. John, you, um, you got who, one more. Yeah. Who, who, who would be the first pick for you uh, if you had to pick a team? Mm. Stewie, for sure. <laughs> wow, you are giving no names. No, no details. <laughs> I like that. It's a good pick. It's a great first pick. Uh, one of the Smart. other goals of the league is to give you guys another option to play overseas during, you know, the off season, which you've played overseas. What's the, I played overseas when I was drafted. There was a lockout. It's completely different. It's completely different rules, completely different travel. What's the biggest difference in your eyes playing overseas versus playing here in the States? I think it's a different game altogether, honestly. Um, it's so different. I mean, the rules are different even, but the style of play, you know, we talk sometimes, like, you can tell when someone's from Europe. You can tell when they're from China. You can tell when they're from different countries. The style of play is really different. So adapting to that. And then also as a big, you know, there's no three seconds in the paint uh, defensive. So that's, like, hard to get adjusted to. Um, so I think it develops your game in a way where you have to think about, think outside of how you normally play. And so that's always good for you as a basketball player as you're learning, you're growing, you're finding new ways to score. Uh, let's talk a little pregame routine, if it is, if it's not, uh, against the Liberty. I do love dancing. I might not be great at it, but I will watch anybody else. I had to dance. educate them. I, know, no. so I had First to educate all, them. No, no. What was going you had to educate fair. Chandler. That's not fair. I've been to weddings and I've done this <laughs> dance. And by the way, wedding. this is how I know I'm not, and that Chandler's not the only one. Bring it back now, y'all. Yeah, like, That's whose idea? That. That's the electric slide. Oh. What is wrong with you? First of all, I could not, I'm not usually this bad. I could not figure out which way we're going for some reason. I think, but, you, uh, yeah, I think you guys nailed started, it. Yeah, yeah, I got there finally, but it took a second. Um, this started before I got there. It's the electric slide, so I don't know how old it is. A thousand like, years for, old. With our team. It's older than um, me. But this was before me, so I don't know who started that. It's been different songs over the years, but that's always been there. See, Chandler thinks it's still the cha-cha slide, even though I've Bless told him heart. four times what is this, it's a the roast? electric slide. <laughs> I made one mistake during a commercial break. break. Bring it back now, y'all. I that made one cha -cha mistake slide. during an album. Because you're embarrassing. Jeff Ross over you're here is roasting us. me. Nafisa, <laughs> uh, you, spent four, you spent four years at UConn, won a national championship in 2016. So I got to ask, who's on, who's on your Mount Rushmore of UConn women's basketball? That's a tough one. There's so many good players. Um, I'll have to go Sue. Diana, Maya, and if I'm not picking myself, I'll pick Stewie. There we go. Mm -hmm. I like oh, okay. It. That's a hell of a score. I would agree with her four. Renee That's came a tough up one. 
Renee and I are the same year, so I will put Renee Montgomery in mind. Yeah. That's a that's a personal connection, and Maya Moore is from my neighborhood, so. I, but I love, oh, yeah? I love your list as well. Yeah. It's sort of a ridiculous Maya, yeah. treasure trove of amazing players. Like I'm, when we're watching, when we're watching Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi, and you're like, good, God, all the UConn people yeah, that come Mount through. Rushmore should go like eight to ten deep. It really is. It's yeah. kind, of, it's kind of a, an absurd thing. Um, but speaking of, we got Dan Hurley. I wake up to the news that he's now a candidate for this Lakers gig out here. Uh, I, I don't know. Do you? You spent a lot of time there. He seems to be happy there. His family seems to be happy there. What do you think about the news of him possibly becoming the Lakers head coach? I mean, I wasn't surprised he, like, is in consideration for a professional gig. He's done so well at UConn. I mean, the, the time I was there, they were not in contention for a national championship. And when he came in, he, like, got his recruiting class in. He's really turned that, you know, that program around, obviously. They've done really, really well. So I think that's an a testament to how good of a coach he is. Um, so I'm not surprised that they want to snatch him up for the pros. Man. Uh, sticking with UConn, Paige Beckers, she's got one more season there. She's obviously a stud. What do, what do you think her transition will be from UConn to the WNBA? I think it's going to be really good. You know, I'm sure she's going to have just as much, like, much spotlight on her, expecting her to be perfect as a rookie, which is impossible. But... I think she's going to be really good. I mean, she really has so much talent. This guy's, I think, the limit for her. She's such a dynamic scorer, and she's a point guard, which is so rare in our league. Like, we're always looking for point guards, so she's going to have a job for a long time. Nafisa, we appreciate you getting up early after a game last night. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, best of luck. Good luck rest the rest of the way. Of the way. Yeah. Thank you. Excited for Thanks, you guys.